Good morning, everyone, um, or good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are. For us, it's really early, so apologies if we sound a bit sleepy. Um, this is the last webinar in a series on key biodiversity areas, which was put by the KBA Secretariat, the Global Center for Species Survival, and IUCN SSC. The webinar will be recorded and we'll make them available on YouTube afterwards and we'll share the four webinars with everyone as well. If you have a question, please submit it in the Q&A throughout the presentation and at the end we'll have um, Eleuterio answer them. Okay. Um, and I'll pass, <clears throat> sorry, I'll pass to Eleuterio Duarte. Um, if you could please introduce yourself and start the presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Uh, Duarte. I'm a young marine biologist in Mozambique. I work for WCS Mozambique as a project assistant since 2019. And it's a good, uh, a great pleasure to be here. And thank you for the invitation. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize. My English is not very good. Uh, I'm not native English. My English is not my native language, but I'll do my best to, uh, to make you understand. And thank you. So we'll start. Okay. Um, I will be presenting about this uh, work we did uh, with the government of Mozambique. Uh, to identify and propose in key biodiversity areas in Mozambique. I will show how the main step we, we, we follow to, to come up with these areas and how the red list uh, um, uh, fit our, our assessment. Okay, uh, just to give you a background of, of my country, uh, Mozambique is a, a big country with uh, and do it do it do its, it, its size and location which is a long cost and drum seam of major river basin. Mozambique holds diversity of very physical condition that make the country holds terrestrial marine and aquatic biodiversity that's unique in the southern African region, even for the world. But uh, the level of knowledge about biodiversity in the country remains limited. However, um, many studies and uh, surveys, uh, expedition it be it be carried out last years. And uh, on this survey, new species have been regularly discovered, highlighting how diverse the country is. Uh, recognizing the importance of key biodiversity areas and the release initiative um, on improvement of conservation activities. The government of Mozambique, I mean, uh, the Minister of Land and Environment, conducted uh, a national KB assessment between 2019 and 2021 with technical support of the FCS and funds for USAID through the Speed Plus program. So this is the project we, we carry out to, to make this national KB assessment. I will now try to show the main step we follow to, to identify these areas. Uh, the first step was to establish the National Coordination Group uh, for TBS and Redis. And this starts with the interaction with the project team interact with the National Directional of Environments to discuss how this uh, potential coordination group could support the role of the institution, in this case of the National Directional of Environment. And uh, we discussed which type of what the profile of institution should be a part of this national coordination group. And as well, we try to align this national coordination group with other resisting uh, groups, uh, because in, at DINAB, there uh, was already a group for biodiverse, biodiversity group. And we try to uh, term of reference. As well, um, Mozambique has already a time, the uh, on time, uh, uh, have already a uh, red list working group, but this red list working group was not formalized. What we did was using this, this national coordination group for TBAs as a way to formalize this existing red list coordination group. This was the approach we followed to, to establish national coordination group. And we also have um, uh, uh, several meetings to discuss 
uh, this term of reference with the potential um, members. Uh, I, I'll show you, I'm showing here the first meeting that's happened in May 2019. For the first meeting, we had uh, the follow meeting in June and the, the T1 was in August. Uh, all these three meetings was to discuss in the degree on the term of reference. Uh, and uh, on this in August, we uh, finally agree on the final term of reference for the national national coordination group, and uh, uh, we organize the fourth meeting which in December to formalize the this group national coordination group, um, and uh, and uh, formalize as well uh, the steering committee of this group. Uh, the group is, is operational, and uh, the main purpose of this group call, uh, is to be uh, the national platform that coordinate all the aspects related to the keyboard diverse areas. I mean, all the process for identifying document documents and uh, delineate TBA, all this process is coordinated by this platform. Uh, and as well, for the red list assessment, uh, I mean red list assessment for species and ecosystem and documentation of this information. All, all this is coordinated by this group, and as well development of plans, activities for conservation, monitoring, management, and protection of TBAs and threatened species and ecosystem in Mozambique. This is I'm showing here on the right is uh, the term of reference, the final term of reference. Uh, this is the main entities that uh, is, is member of the groups. We have uh, several institutions, many of them for the governments. You can see here some institutions for the government. As well, is represented national administration of conservation areas, national fund for sustainable development. As well, is uh, integrating group. We have as well the some institution NGO that work in Mozambique that is a is a member of KBA partnership. I mean WCS, ACN, WWF, and Jeff as well is, is also part of this national coordination group. We have some uh, research institution, academies, uh, other partners for private sector, consultants, uh, local NGO. All this is a is a is a member of this group, and this group is a. Um, is hosted by the by the government. The president of the group is the government, is the national director of environment, is which is hosting this group. And we also have a specific uh, focal point for TBAs and a specific focal point for species and red list uh, for the red list of species and ecosystem, as well focal point for that management. Uh, the second step after we formalized this national coalition group was to establish uh, working groups. Uh, we established uh, about eight taxonomic working groups, one for birds, mammals, amphibians, reptiles, uh, invertebrates, um, uh, freshwater fish, plants, and marine biodiversity as well. Um, but for aptofauna, uh, freshwater fish, butterflies, working groups, besides the QB assessment, it was necessary to assess the conservation status according to the ICN red listing. This because uh, the treating status of several endemic species uh, or named endemic species uh, had not been, been assessed before. So we use it, we intend to do so as a way of contribute. We, we have to do before the KBS, the red list assessment for this specific uh, uh, taxonomy group. Um, we have, for each uh, coordination group, we, had, uh, we, we have the same structure, it was composed by the main specialists. Usually, uh, main specialists were the experts with recognized knowledge on the specific taxonomy groups and with recognized experience in conducting study in Mozambique. We have uh, we have also that management assistants, uh, which is the young young biologists uh, that work as a focal point for each uh, for, net, for each taxonomy group. Was responsible for compiling, organizing all information of biodiversity elements in the specific format to do this the respective assessment. And we have we have also the sporting specialists, usually uh, foraging uh, specialists uh, who had already conducted any study within the country with uh, relevant data 
uh, for for specific biodiversity in the country. So this was the main structure for the of the our, our working groups. So when the step main step was to uh, organize this refresh uh, refresh or training meeting uh, to build a skill on data mobilization for KBAs and business assessment for these specific groups. So we, we held two specific uh, training meetings uh, in the beginning. So uh, this was targeted to the data management system to create this, this, this ability to mobilize uh, data and for application in KBAs and with this, this plan where, how to, 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 to find this data, where to find this data, how to organize the data for the respective assessment. This was necessary uh, to do in the beginning of the assessment. One of the main steps as well was to establish the end uh, Establish the potential trigger species. Um, this is very, very important. So to establish this uh, this list, uh, this was a, a continual process with the specialists. Firstly, for the KBS, we filtering we filtered all the species on the ICN page, all the species that was treated and with its distribution within the, with the occurrence in the country. We filtered all the species including the species for economic exclusive zone for marine species. And uh, when we filter this list, we send this for uh, experts to validate this list to do the validation. And the expert supported uh, checking the species name, taxonomy, uh, removing the species that not occur in Mozambique and had other potential kibiatural species on the list. So after this process, we had, we had uh, we have, uh, we have the, the validated list for, for the KBA assessment. And uh, for the red list, uh, the list was validated uh, by the main specialist, but we focus only on the endemic, non endemic, rare, range restricted, and recently described species to, to establish the list for the red list assessment for this for uh, a specific taxonomic groups, I mean amphibians, reptile fish, water fish, and butterflies. So um, the next step was to mobilize data for these uh, priority species, or for these uh, selected species. For this, we had the contribution of several institutions, including the National Foundation Group, play uh, play an uh, important role in this process. We also allocated some data management systems at different institutions holding biodiversity data, uh, museums, etc. Some 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 uh, academy, some university. We we allocate this data management system to collect this data inside uh, uh, on this institution. We also contact more than a uh, hundred experts for national, regional, and international level including museums, um, uh, National Administration of Conservation, we contact them to, to uh, uh, mobilize this data for the assessment of, on this priority species. So uh, as you know, to conduct uh, the KB assessment, we need to inf information at the global and local level, just uh, to understand whether the species meet or not, or not the threshold of the, of the KBA criteria. Uh, so, the data management system had to compile relevant information at global scale first uh, for each species or for each to the species. Uh, most information um, correspond to the species population size, uh, extent of suitable habitat, range, localities. All this information had to be collected at, at global level and, and local level. And for the red list, follow the same process that you uh, are, are using. So the data management system collect all the information on size, uh, on population size, uh, uh, species ecology, et cetera, all the information that's relevant for the red list assessment. So one of the, the main steps as well was the organization of the workshops. We organized three major workshops. The first one is uh, was the training workshop to understand the KBA standards. So <clears throat> as you know, the KBA identification requires a good understanding of criteria, threshold, and assessment parameters. 
uh, for the reason we organized this workshop and uh, the training was provided by the head of QBA Secretariat, I mean, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Andy Pumchen, using a practical methodology uh, with some practical exercises to, uh, and around uh, 40 people from different institutions were trained on this, on this workshop. And uh, this was main work, this is a key workshop because uh, only after this initial training, there was a declared knowledge on how to apply TBA uh, global standard and guidelines. And this leads the expert to have, to have a great involvement in the project because only, about, on, uh, only after this workshop, the expert feel more comfortable uh, they understand more about the TBA, the importance, which, which type of data is necessary, and then we had more a great involvement of expert, uh, national expert, after this uh, training workshop. And we also organized a specific training workshop for the red list assessment. Um, uh, the, we was four day of, of workshop. The first day uh, of workshop uh, we was for to was intensive training on the ICN guidelines that I sent for the for ICN red list assessment. This training was provided by Liz. Liz was studied from Sunbury. She is accredited uh, by ICN to provide this type uh, of training in the region. So on this workshop, we assessed about uh, 67 species uh, from this for the for the for the four taxonomic groups. So <clears throat> about uh, a half of the species, 52% of the, of, the, of the species were asked was uh, assigned with the with treatment categories. So after uh, this is, was a workshop because this data um, of the red list assessment was used uh, after to, to, uh, to feed the KBA assessment. That is very important. The red list is very important to, to feed this, this assessment. And uh, after uh, uh, the workshop, uh, initially we we only use the criteria B for the KBS, which uh, criteria B is for restricted restricted distribution species, because we didn't apply um, for this restricted species. We didn't apply uh, we didn't apply uh, criteria A for treatment by diversity because. We could only apply this if ICN published. Okay, we didn't apply uh, criteria A for these species. Uh, we wait for the publication to be to, make, to be made official to use this data on the KBA assessment. Okay, that, that's important to note that. Um, we also organized a specific workshop for delineation for to because. Before this workshop, each uh, taxonomy group was working, was applied, uh, was applying the KBA criteria uh, independently. Okay, so what we did in this workshop was to uh, combine all this independent, uh, all, all this assessment that was that was did independently to delineate the general uh, the general boundaries uh, following the KBA uh, global standard. We have to check uh, if we exist in conservation areas, boundary, remove no natural habitats, aligning with other biophysical and administrative future, I mean roads, rivers, to make the bond more manageable, right? This was attended by uh, 61 people for 33 uh, institutions, including private sector, who attended this, this, this workshop. So this was very important as well. So after we delineate this, this KBS, we had also to consult uh, with uh, different entities, uh, uh, including the formal proposal, the, the proposal of the formal uh, KBS and IBS. Because uh, as you know, uh, according to the, to the KBA guidelines, KBS must not overlap, okay? But on our assessment, some proposed KBA intercepts boundaries of pre-existing KBAs, uh, uh, other other uh, other areas as ABAs and RF zero extinction. So, if that happens, if if overlap if KBA overlap with these areas, is uh, necessary to 
uh, build consensus with the previous proposal uh, before changing boundaries. So we did this consultation with these institutions, uh, mainly with Bad Luck International, uh, in order to, to, to reach the consensus on the proposed boundaries. Okay, this is a very important step on the TBA assessment to, to when, when TBA overlap with existing uh, important areas, you need to uh, you need to uh, build this consensus with your formal proposal to 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 agree on the boundary. Okay. So after all this process, we had to submit this this final TBA proposal to the to the National Coordination Group. Uh, and on national coordination group, as I explained, there's a specific focal point for the TBAs. So this focal point have been reviewing this, this proposal as well. And after uh, uh, when they reviewed all the TBA, we, we held two validation meetings with all, all the coordination group just to um to to build consensus be prior to submitting this this proposal to the kba secretary after we agree on the final proposal we submitted to the kba partnership bodies i mean uh, regional focal points and then kba secretary okay um i'm showing now uh, the final uh the final kba that was identified in mozambique so we identify about uh, 29 TBS, uh, four marine and 25 uh, terrestrial TBS and uh, 50 potential uh, as was considered as potential because we didn't have enough information to, to confirm if it's TBA, but uh, they had this potential. So they, these areas, these 50 areas need more uh, studies more more data collecting to to be able to be assessed as a, as a, against a KBA criteria. So this, this is I'm showing here the the final maps of the KBAs in, in Mozambique, and uh, there is is the, there is a statistic for this uh, KBAs in Mozambique. Uh, KBA um, covering about ten percent. Of the entire uh, national territory, the marine KBA cover about just uh, one percent of economic exclusive zone of the territory. And uh, regarding the continental territory, the KBAs cover about this, uh, seventeen um, uh, uh, percent. Okay. In terms of protection, around uh, eighty-five percent of uh, of KBA. Is covered uh, is is under some type of formal protection, and uh, the fifty percent is uh, is uh, without any formal protection. Okay, is this is in terms of area of these KBAs. Right? Many of the KBAs overlap with the conservation areas, the big KBA, small KBAs are within are, are with the, are, uh, outside the national network of conservation areas. So other statistic in terms of species, we use it about, uh, uh, the, about uh, 118 species trigger, uh, trigger, uh, trigger TBA for, for, for different taxonomic groups. Um, uh, the majority are plant species, 57% uh, of, of the KBAs were, was triggered by plant species. The lowest number uh, of triggered species were marine mammals and marine fishes as well, okay, with only 1% of KBA triggered by this, this taxonomic groups. Um, in terms of criteria, uh, uh, about the the criteria B1 for the restricted range distribution species was the most uh, frequently triggered criteria, suggesting that the most of the key BS triggered species are endemic or near endemic of Mozambique. Okay, but we also have have um, criteria E1 and E1B for treatment species as well uh, with the triggered KBAs. Okay, 
I'll show now some uh, few examples of keep the Niasa Special Reserve. This is uh, the biggest conservation areas in Mozambique. Um, this is areas co-managed by the FCS and, and governments. Uh, this is a special reserve. As you can see, the, this area triggered uh, many criteria for criteria A for, for, for treating species and B for, for endemic or restricted, restricted distribution of species. Um, many of the species was mammals because this area uh, holds the great, greater, the biggest uh, mammal population for elephants, lion, and wild dogs. This is the site of the biggest population in Mozambique. And um, some uh, reptiles as well, and freshwater fish uh, trigger the site. Uh, the main threats of the site uh, is um, agriculture, alluvial, alluvial mining for gold and rubies. And bush, bush, bush meat, shell, knowing. So there's some some traits of, of this area. Just so this some other example for Mount Namuli. This is uh, the difference of other is this this is not protected, right? This is not uh, conservation areas. Uh, this is located in Zambezia uh, province. Uh, is a is a unique area because it's all the all the many uh, endemic species. About uh, sixteen species are endemic and uh, have a great number great number of uh, threatened species. About that species trigger KBAs, including uh, mammals, uh, birds, uh, amphibians, reptiles, and plants, of course. This site is not protected yet, and um, uh, it is suffering uh, with main threats on agriculture suspension, uncontrolled fires, uh, impacts of uh, domestic livestock, so, etc. This. Uh, organization called it French, French NGO that is today is this NGO. So this NGO is now working with communities uh, to propose new conservation area. Okay, in this case, community conservation area. So the National Coordination Group is supporting this uh, organization in order to to propose to make to to establish the, this proposal to to protect these areas because these areas as you can see is a very rich in terms of biodiversity and uh, is suffering with main traits and is not uh, protected yet so we, we are we are helping them so this is one one of the role of the structural cottage group helping uh, conservation in situ uh, helping conserve the tbas and plans of, of conservation so we are doing this uh, currently uh, just to give any example of marine TBS, we are, we have also the Great Bazarutu, uh, which is also the is partially covered by National Park of Conservation of of of, of Great Bazarutu. Uh, this area was triggered, as you can see, with criteria A and B. Uh, most of triggered species was was the you can see the and humpback dolphin. Uh, this site is the the site is the only site that you can find the last of the unique uh, viable population of the wongs uh, in the entire Western Indian Ocean. So this is very very important for the species dugong, and the species is, is a threatened, so also triggered as a as a KBAs uh, with, with the budget number. Okay, uh, main traits is all over exploration, artisanal fishing, slash, and, uh, and shifting agriculture. Uh, all this debate that I was showing here, some example, was launched officially by the Minister of the Land of the Environment on 20, 21 May in, of, the, of 2021. Uh, this was uh, launched uh, uh, in allusion of celebration of the International Biodiversity Day. Okay, you can see some photo of the minister uh, here launching officially these this areas uh, uh, in Mozambique. Okay, 
And I will show now how uh, some example how we are using this key base uh, to in Mozambique to on the special planning as well on the legislation and other study how we how we 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 are using this information to feed this uh, several um, uh, several tools in Mozambique. Okay. Um, I will show you uh, some example. For example, in May uh, last year, uh, the government published uh, uh, the Minister Diploma for Biodiversity Offsets. This is a legal document. And uh, the key BA is integrated as areas to be avoided by development projects and uh, as a biodiversity offset to receiving areas, particularly for the case where these key bases are used to establish new protected areas. So this was a big achievement for us uh, to, in terms of protection of key bases. Um, this is a, it's a great opportunity because now the companies can, can uh, offset, can, uh, can do offsets, um, uh, creating new, key, new, new conservation areas using, using key bases, okay? So on this diploma as well, uh, they say, uh, diplomas say that if any significant uh, residual impacts, negative impacts of, of projects developments uh, occur within any conservation areas, any, I mean, any key biodiversity areas, uh, the biodiversity offset must be designed to achieve net gain in biodiversity, okay? And net gain in biodiversity, we mean is, a, is the one that uh, exceed the results of not not no no net loss by at least fifty percent. Okay, this is already established uh, on this diploma, and we are now working with government as well uh, to do. Uh, we launched you no know, cons consultants with government to assess the potential of conservation areas and key biodiversity areas for the coastal zone as a recipient of biodiversity offset project in Mozambique. Okay. After this, this, this study, we, we will establish the list of potential KBA, uh, list with, um, uh, uh, um, uh, of the KBAs that, ha that have potential to receive uh, biodiversity offsets in, in, in Mozambique, okay? So we are, we are considering all the precondition that is stated on diploma, we, including start of funding, management, technical capacity of this area in receiving offsets, okay? This, this study is, is, uh, is underway. We, we hope to until, uh, until uh, mid, uh, mid of this year, we, we will have, we'll have these results. Uh, another uh, uh, legal document is uh, the decree on bird life conservation uh, that was uh, published in 2021. And on this uh, document, KBS are, are officially recognized as a protection zone for birds and their habitats where the bird development project should be avoided. Development project that's, that, uh, that could treat the species that triggers KBS not should be avoided. Okay, um, recognizes this 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 decree as as well recognized the National Coordination Group as uh, being responsible for reviewing, updating the list of national uh, key biodiversity areas. So this is a well uh, big achievement in terms of protection of these areas in Mozambique. Um, these key biodiversity areas uh, were also integrated in the, into the National Marine Special Planning. I mean. Um, and as well, national territorial development plan. Okay, this is a on this special plan. Kibera are integrated as area that should be avoided by developing projects. So this is as well uh, a big achievement in terms to 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 conserve this series. Another example is the. Uh, but key base were also used to inform, uh, are, are, are also be using to inform marine, marine protected area expansion because uh, Mozambique only uh, have 2.1% uh, of economic exclusive zone protected. But we, 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 the government is interested to, to expand uh, the national network of uh, marine protected areas 
But to do this, uh, we we have to firstly to do any uh, any study. We, we have to do this spatial prioritization analysis to support the marine protected area expansion and to inform as well the marine spatial planning. And WCS, uh, in coordination with Oceanographic Mozambique Oceanographic Institute, work on this study on this um, spatial prioritization analysis using uh, softwares. Uh, um, and uh, we identify uh, priority area to establish the new marine protected areas. In KBS, we use it on this process. Uh, as you can see, uh, um, uh, on this on this image, uh, all the existing marine protected areas in key biodiversity areas. Uh, were locked in, uh, so they were always uh, selected by the software. You can see here uh, all the marine KBS were selected as a, as a potential uh, marine conservation areas. Okay, so what what I can share now is the all the four well, the four 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 marine KBS are now um, uh, there are several initiatives in place to in order to. Uh, convert this marine KBAs in conservation in marine conservation areas. Okay, all all, all these areas is already uh, under under process to be converted uh, as a conservation areas with with several initiatives. Okay. Uh, another example is the Mozambique is now reviewing the forest forest law, and the key biodiversity areas is also integrated as a hosting conservation forest for special purpose, okay? This is, is uh, also one, one uh, of the achievements uh, that we had in terms of, of informing uh, special planning and, and uh, legislation. Uh, additionally, um, key biodiversity, uh, um, uh, National Institute, National Petroleum Institute for the Ministry of, of uh, Resource of, um, Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy is leading uh, the development of environmental and social vulnerability mapping for oil and gas exploration and production in Mozambique. So they integrated integrated key base as vulnerable zones that should be avoided for oil and gas uh, exploration and production activities. So the goals of this uh, tool is to assist the national institution uh, of petroleum uh, and other related institutions during the season making. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, for determining lease and condition, for special planning in oil and gas sector, also to develop or improve uh, regulation related to oil and gas uh, exploration and production. Uh, I will show now some report and publication that you can find all this information that I was sharing now. Uh, we we have this uh, 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 this volume one final report that describe all the process, all the steps that I was explaining now, all the process we follow to identify these key base. Any country that wants to identify uh, key base uh, can 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 use this 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 information on this report that is very very detailed. Can follow all the steps to replicate. What we did for for Mozambique, all the all is documented on this uh, volume one. We also have the volume two with the description of all the areas, site description, the list of species that trigger some photos, the traits, and rationale to for this key, for this area be, being considered as a keyboard series. We also had this uh, two report. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's only in Portuguese. Uh, but this uh, report is a case-by-case -case recommendation for all the key base identified in Mozambique. Uh, they provide some recommendation for preserve these areas, okay, based on the potential of these areas and also with the regulation uh, uh, with the with the law, okay. So we um, they this describe all the potential management improvement. That should be uh, carried out in each uh, uh, key biodiversity areas. Okay, so we also have this this other report that uh, the relationship of key biodiversity areas and red lists. Okay, 
um, how these areas can inform how, how, how this, uh, what is the relationship of key biodiversity areas and regions with the local, with the national policies, strategy, laws, reg regulation, and convention. Can this document uh, do this, uh, um, this relationship? Okay, how this can inform, how this can help uh, achieving main uh, aspect that is described in, in each policy and, and strategy laws in, in Mozambique. Okay, this is this is a very important document for the government. In Mozambique. Uh, we also uh, we also have this policy brief, uh, maps, infographics for these areas, uh, and we also had a, a national atlas. Of TBS uh, that's showing this, this is also available in English. So show all the maps, the maps of all the KBAs identified in Mozambique. You can click uh, here uh, on, on the platform and show all the related information in terms of description, uh, rational threats, photos, the trigger species. All, 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 all the this is described on this on this atlas is online okay it's more interactive and uh, we also uh, as a spin off of this of this project of of the of national assessment we developed this uh, with with most with the government we developed this mozambique biodiversity information system what happened is the when we finalize the kb assessment we 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 face some difficulties to find what platform we, we could use to share all this information on KBA assessment. So together with government, we 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 develop this uh, Mozambique Biodiversity Information System to share information not only for the KBAs and identified Mozambique, as well all the all 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 all, all other information relevant for 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 biodiversity in Mozambique, including a specific page for red listing all the all the information. Or about the red listing of species and ecosystem, you can find on this uh, Mozambique Biodiversity Information System of framework, uh, convention, etc. All the information related to biodiversity, biodiversity is shared uh, on this on this uh, platform, okay, which is sibmos.gov.mz. Uh, okay, this, this is um, the, 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 the address of the website. Okay, after the identification of the KBS, we had some opportunities because now Mozambican institution can uh, assess more funds and investments. As you know, some institutional uh, like Rainforest Trust and Jeff um, use, use the, the KBS as a mechanism to, to, to finance, okay? To, to inform uh, to the decision on the how on 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 decision on where to 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 funds okay to um, to, to to funds so for example rainforest trust uh, uh, recently uh, are, are receiving application uh, uh, that that leads uh, uh, to protect the key base that that is not on the on the national conservation area system okay so it, um, they launched this this uh, some some institution is now working to propose to make a proposal to run forest rights in, in order to uh, establish new conservation areas using the key base that's outside the national net network of conservation area. And this will be uh, good also for communities because this could give jobs and uh, uh, for the communities. Uh, uh, if we establish community conservation areas, as well offsets can also be uh, uh, can also provide job for 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 the communities with result based payments. It's a it's a great opportunity that uh, key biodiversity areas is is um, uh, is. Um, we have with good biodiversity areas in Mozambique. Okay, so as a next step, this is the last slide. Uh, we are now uh, on a new projects called mainstream key biodiversity areas, piloting blue carbon and strain coral reef fisheries in Mozambique. This is two air projects. Uh, this is funded by the, by the USAID and Speed program. 
um, the objective of this this project is collecting uh, uh, data on sites, uh, developing and submitting proposal for new key base. As I, I was showing here, I was showing uh, uh, before uh, there was uh, 15 areas that was uh, that. Um, that is a potential QBA that needed more information on, on site to be to be assessed. So we are focused on this area in terms of collecting more data in site. We are so conduct some serving on the on this site in order to submit in and pro propose new QBAs. And also we are we are doing additional red list assessment. Uh, focus on flora and marine species because on the previous previous process we focus on the reptiles, amphibians, uh, 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 butterflies. So in uh, freshwater fish, we are now focus on flora and marine species, and this will also uh, be good. This 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 assessment will also fit the KB assessment. So we also um, uh, create capacity national capacity for National Coordination Group and other government institutions regarding the KBA and the Red List Assessment. And we also uh, focus, uh, focusing on the conservation planning and financial solution for the KBA. How we can, um, we, are, we, are, we are exploring, for example, blue carbon as a, a financial mechanism to, to, guarantee, to guarantee the sustainability of uh, key biodiversity area. We are, we are, we are doing this feas feasibility study uh, on this project. We also have uh, another project, uh, regional project that will also, um, that will be applied to collect more field data and assess new key bases in Mozambique. So we, we, we didn't stop. We are still uh, um, uh, uh, search uh, new, new data to, to, to assess key bases in Mozambique. So this is this is um, was uh, the final slide, and uh, thank you for staying with me. And uh, sorry for for my poor English. And feel free to make any question. And uh, yes, thank you. Thank you so much for presenting, um, everyone. This is Kelly from the Global Center in Indianapolis. Um, we do have some wonderful questions and, and definitely no need to apologize for um, your English. It was phenomenal. Um, we have uh, a few questions in the Q&A window. I would ask that if possible for some folks who put questions in the chat, please move those questions into the Q&A. It helps us for our record keeping of all the questions that have been asked. Um, but I will go ahead and start addressing some of those questions and, and asking them of our speaker. The first question was, can the process be used diagnostically? Do an assessment, score it, do some conservation and go back, reassess? Can it guide site management? Uh, yes, uh, I think yes, because... Um... For example, for Mozambique, we we had this this um, uh, this, this this document, volume three, that uh, provide provide um, uh, recommendation of of each site. What we did is um, uh, because, as you know, KBA is not conservation areas, but we can use it to recommend the management of of of, of the site. So we we did this set, we did this recommendation for each site and what what type of um, of activities can be uh, took in place to 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 uh, to improve the management of these areas. So the, yes, we, we, this can be used diagnostically and also to to guide the site management. I don't know if it, this is answer. Yes, thank you. Okay, next question. Um, excellent presentation. What are the main challenges encountered in the KBA delineation process? Yes, uh, this is a uh, yeah, very challenging. We had, we had many challenges, uh, especially for, for example, for, for delineate marine KBAs. Uh, because, as you know, the marine species ha had uh, have a, a big range of distribution, and we we 
we what was a very very difficult to to find out to to delineate site that that can can um, uh, to, to delineate site that can be manageable and can also protect uh, the the species. So it's a very 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 challenging. Um, uh, but what we did. Well, for many areas, we follow the existing conservation areas. For areas that that, that overlap conservation areas, we we try to follow the 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 uh, on the niche. We try to follow the existing boundary for the conservation areas. So um, we try to 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 do this on this way to 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 uh, to to win this this challenge. So yes, I don't know if if if, if uh, I uh, answer this. If you, if you, we have any other question, that's great. Yes, we do have more questions. Um, we had a question that was in the chat, um, and it says, uh, "Congratulations to our colleagues in Mozambique for this great achievement." I am interested to know how long did this process take from KBA identification to gazetting. What is the estimated budget used during this process? Okay, well, for for the first for the first phase, we take we talk we, we took about uh, uh, three years two years of assessment, and uh, this uh, in terms of budgets, uh, I, I I can't I can't exactly say um, precisely how much we 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 use on this on this specific process but i think it was more than half of a million dollars okay uh, but of uh, 500 uh, uh, 5 5000 dollars i think uh, we, we use it from the from the kba process um but this this is a, uh, as you know KBA is a is a is a, is, is a new new process so we we have first we have to learn about KBS before we we actually uh, apply the the criteria and uh, the assessment so this took long long to learn to understand what is KBA and then to 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 apply uh, 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 to apply uh, the, the the assessment so. This can can vary for for each country depending on the the stage of knowledge each each country are, are in terms of KBA. On this second phase, we 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 are the project is about two years two years and we are now uh, because we we already know how to apply and it would be easier. But for country that didn't, uh, uh, did, is the first time we take. Uh, probably will take more. For example, to establish national conservation group was a uh, very challenging. Uh, we, had, we 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 expected to to realize uh, to hold uh, only one meeting, what to, but took about four meeting to 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 formalize this coordination group, and then to 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 move forward on on, on the the next step. So so this this varies uh, uh, in country. Wonderful, thank you. Um, we have a few more questions in the, the Q&A. Um, someone has asked, Rainforest Trust is mostly focusing on species on the edge. If KBAs fit in there, then okay, but, but that is not the focus. Yes, the, the rainforest uh, is, uh, is the, the, uh, asking for application. For this site that was triggered by by treating species, okay. The focus of the day is a treating species, because the site that was triggered uh, with uh, we trigger with the treating species means that uh, the if we protect these KBAs, we are protecting this uh, the, the 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 most significant sites for for this for this treating species. So this is the rationale that they they are using. For the proposal, they are uh, 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 fi finding um, financing financing uh, the establishment of protection area, uh, looking for the KBAs that were triggered by treatment treatment species. 
Wonderful. Um, I want to make sure before I get to some other questions to point out that Charlotte Boyd has placed some resources and comments in the webinar chat that some folks attending may find useful. Um, the next question is, uh, it says, great talk. Are you able to share contact details to talk about KBAs, AZEs for trees in Mozambique? Yes, yes, I can, I can share that. I will share also my, my email. You can, uh, you can uh, get in touch with me. I will uh, provide all the information that's needed. And if you have more uh, doubts, you can, uh, we, I can explain with you uh, after this meeting or by email or another, another call. I'm, I'm, I'm available to, to, to share all the information that, uh, that, we, that we produce. Yeah. Perfect. Um, another question here. Um, Eluterio, thank you for a fabulous talk. Has there been a possibility to engage with small scale fishers with limited range of action who may feel their livelihoods could be threatened if they are excluded from access to nearby resources? Dialogue often helps find solution. Similar challenges for small scale terrestrial resource users. Thank you. This is a challenge, challenging um, question. So here, so address the situation. Okay, uh, about engagement with small, uh, small scale fisheries. Uh, Yes, on the first phase, we didn't uh, engage directly with the uh, communities or small scale fisheries, but we engaged with the uh, institution that work with this, with this, uh, uh, with this um, type of, uh, with this, with this, with the communities and uh, small scale fishery, so that they uh, they provide the feedback on, on their side. So, but yeah, you, your question is a very challenging. Uh, I don't, but we can we can follow follow up with this after. If you can test me on email, I can I can I can explain you more in detail how, how, how we can address this. Great, and it looks like Katya has shared your email address in the chat for folks who okay. would like to um, reach out to you with further questions. Right. We have another question that just appeared in the Q&A. It says, I think community engagement is missing from most conservation practices, not just the KBA process. What checks and balances do you have? Sorry, can you repeat this one? Sure. It says, yeah. I think community engagement is missing from most conservation practices, not just the KBA process. What checks and balances do you have? Yes, uh, I was explaining before, uh, yeah, this is very, very challenging, not for, not even just for KBAs, but for any process addressing uh, the We, we are trying uh, uh, using the community, using the institution that work with the local communities, trying to address and balance this, this process. I was explain on the slide, uh, for example, for Namuli, Kibe uh, Namuli, we had uh, in today with, uh, with the local NGO that work with the communities. We are trying to, to, to find out what uh, to, to look for for um, the opinions for the communities, so we can also try to address this these opinions on the, our our assessment. Okay, but it's a very very challenging in, in country. I can I, I don't have a direct answer for for you on on this on this matter. It's a challenging one. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Let me see if we have any more. Um, 
I think that that is all of the questions we've had submitted, unless anyone has a final one in the next couple of minutes. Uh, again, um, I have put some notes in the chat, including a link to the previous three KBA webinars. They are all uploaded on YouTube, and we will be adding um, Eleuterio's um, webinar to that list to that playlist later this week when <laughs> it'll be me who adds it so when i get a chance to uh to download the video and and put it online for everyone to see uh additionally we have the the contact information and some excellent links in the chat that uh, charlotte boyd has provided us with um i want to thank our speaker uh, oh, we have one more question here. It says, um, <laughs> it's just some from someone basically saying I have been difficult with my questions. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I think that these have been some wonderful questions, even though they are challenging. And and I really appreciate um, Oterio, uh, and I apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name well, um, uh, for, for your time today and for this wonderful information. It seems like it was a very valuable webinar for uh, all of our attendees. Um, so if there are no final questions, um, we will go ahead and wrap things up. Again, if you uh, have uh, anyone who would want to still attend this webinar, we are going to be doing it a little bit later on today. Um, I can't remember what the, the time is in um, UTC, and I don't have Zoom open right now to tell me that, but it's it's a few hours from now. So if anyone would still want to attend the next session, we have promoted that on our social media channels as well for the um, uh, Protect Species on Twitter, if you have information uh, that you need to find from us on there. So um, any closing thoughts for us, Eleuterio? No, just I uh, would like to, to thank you for, for staying uh, in the webinar. And uh, I'm open to any uh, further question. You can, you can contact me. I'm always available to, to share to share this information. And uh, this, this was a very challenge, challenging, but uh, a great opportunity to, to, to me. And thank you. Thank you. We'll see you later today. Have okay, a good day, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, I will tell you. Bye.